Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering the AWS Accenture Executive Summit. Brought to you by Accenture. Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage of the AWS Executive Summit. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, and I'm joined by Kathleen Natriello. She is the Vice President and Head of IT Digital Design at Bristol Myers Squibb, and Shalu Chada, Senior Technology Services Lead at Accenture. Thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. Sure. Thank you for having us. So yeah. we're, we're going to talk about Bristol-Myers Squibb's journey to the cloud today, but I, but I want, I, I, Bristol-Myers Squibb is a household name, mm -hmm. but I would love you to just start out, Kathleen, by telling our viewers a little bit about Bristol-Myers Squibb, just how big a global pharma yeah. company you are. Sure, um, we're a global company, as you said. Um, we have about 23,000 employees all over the world, and we are very focused on um, our immuno-oncology therapies. And, and the way that they work is that they boost the immune system um, to, to fight cancer. So it's a, a really exciting development that we've had over the years. And so what was it sort of in the trajectory of Bristol-Myers Squibb that made you realize as an organization, we need to do things differently. What challenges were you facing? So um, we're very science focused. Um, in terms of developing treatments um, for our patients. And so our highest priority was our scientists' productivity. And so we started our cloud journey about 10 years ago, and our initial focus was on uh, leveraging burst computing in AWS, um, which enabled um, us to spin up uh, enough capacity for our scientists to do um, uh, research with very large volumes of data. That's one of the things about a biopharma. We use very large volumes for um, genomics uh, research. And, and also, so with this partnership, using AWS, you also partner with Accenture. So can you describe a little bit, Shalu, how the partnership evolved? Right, and so that journey that Kathy mentioned, we've been part of that journey for the last two years now. Um, and I think it's this nice partnership between AWS, BMS, and Accenture. Um, and the teams have gone on with um, a lot of quick successes and mm -hmm. early successes. And I think going forward, the, uh, the focus is really now, business is going to look for a, more, a lot more demand and agility. Um, cloud adoption is going to be key and how we actually expand on that. And I know we're talking amongst us to say, how do we get there faster now? A little less conversation, a little more action. Yes, yeah, right. we just heard that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. There you yes, go. Exactly. Yeah. So, so let's talk about this journey. So, you're not only migrating existing applications; you're also building your own applications. Yes. Now what? What's the sort of the wisdom behind that strategy? A, a couple of things. So, I mentioned earlier that that we started our journey um, with our scientists, and and we've continued because that's where um, AWS really delivers significant value for Bristol-Myers Squibb. Um, so what we have done is uh, implemented several um, AWS cloud services um, that enable our scientists to use machine learning, artificial intelligence, um, a lot of computational approaches and um, simulations that significantly reduce the amount of time it takes them to do an experiment as well as the cost. Because they no longer have to use actual physical material or patients or investigators, they can do it all through simulation and modeling, which is exciting. So, I, I mean, we, we all know that the drug discovery process takes a long time yes. and, and it, it's, it's tedious, um, cumbersome. So can you actually bring it back down to earth a little bit and say, what what have you seen? What are your scientists in terms of how the drug discovery process is going? Yeah, our scientists are our biggest advocates of, of the cloud and, and the capabilities it delivers. And they will um, report back to us that they are doing things with machine learning and artificial intelligence with these simulations that they're doing in, in a, a few hours that used to take them weeks and months, and so that's how it's really shortening um, that cycle. And are the patients feeling the benefits yet too? The patients um, will feel the benefits uh, with our focus on clinical trials, mm -hmm. and so um, being able to speed up uh, a clinical trial uh, is very helpful, and uh, both from the patient experience as, as well as, as um, the investigators. Shalu, can you talk about some of the other innovation and automation capabilities? Yeah, so um, BMS is really on this really exciting journey, and now that they've 
like Kathy said, have extended some of those capabilities and actually building and enabling for the scientists or the commercial, the brand sites. It's now about really what do you do next and how you bring that next wave of innovation. And so what's been nice at, at Bristol Myers Squibb and the partnership we have with Accenture here is really looking at taking some of the learnings we had in the back office, in the mm -hmm. finance and the procurement where we've actually brought a, a lot of process efficiency through our bots, taking some of that learnings and bringing that across in many other different ways. And now we have bots across legal, compliance, uh, moving into the clinical area that mm -hmm. um, adverse events, and we're really looking at really that part, which is how do you actually get quicker with what, how the patients are going to see both um, responses to the adverse events as well as how do you actually accelerate the clinical trial process. Yep. And all of those innovations are really possible with what Kathy has set up in her organization and actually having that dig digital acceleration competency and be able to take this pan enterprise. One of the things that's so interesting about these partnerships is how you work together. Yes. And and I mean, is it that you're focusing on the science and Accenture is thinking about the technology? I mean, are you sort of two different groups or how are you coming together to collaborate yeah. and build a relationship? I really see it as three groups. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's Bristol Myers Squibb that's that's focused on the science and, as well as as the technology. And if I take an example of how that partnership works, um, when we were doing our migration to the cloud, the more aggressive um, plan that we have in place right now, um, Amazon partnered with us on a migration readiness program, mm -hmm. um, and that enabled us to move. A, as much as 400 plus workloads um, into the cloud and, and two other um, locations. And then Accenture partnered with us as well um, to actually um, move the applications and migrate them um, to the cloud and the two other locations. So I really see it as a, as a three-way partnership. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And part of the way, um, one of the reasons it's so successful is it's not just BMS partnering with Accenture and BMS partnering with Amazon, um, but it's Amazon and Accenture partnering together. And they will come up with ideas on, here's what we think will make um, BMS even more successful. And how and how is that? Is it because you are really grasping their business challenges? Or I mean, how are you able to come up with, I mean, you're not a life science person. Right. <laughs> so right. how are you doing yeah. that? No, it's a good it's a good question and I think when I reflect on our experience with other clients, I think what's so, tr so tremendously making us successful here is everything is about interest base. Mm -hmm. And it's about how we start the conversation, the patient in the center, mm -hmm. and then it's about whose interests are we serving, let's be clear, and let's try and try to progress into what's the solution that actually meets that. So I think whether um, Kathy mentioned it in the cloud cumulus work or even with the S SAP S4 journey right now, it's the combination of AWS, BMS, and Accenture in that journey of how we're going to solve this together, uh, those critical and complex um, programs. Kathy, you said that um, scientists were some of your biggest advocates mm -hmm. for going cloud native. Mm -hmm. I'm curious about the rest of the workforce. I mean, has it been, sometimes introducing new technologies and new ways yeah. of doing things can, can cause consternation among, right. among your employees. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, and my organization, we bring a lot of change. Um, to the rest of the company. Um, and you're right, sometimes it's well received. Um, but I think um, when it is well received is when um, across the company they can see the productivity gains with our robotics process automation um, and a digital workforce. Um, people are able to have, uh, they're able to get a lot more done. And so there's acceptance uh, of that and very often um, the business functions are the ones that introduce the new technologies because they're really interested in it and, and curious. So it works out well. So they're getting more done, so they're yes. more productive, so then they're more satisfied with their work and life. Yes. And exactly. Mm -hmm. So tell, tell our viewers a little bit more about what's next for this, for this partnership, for this relationship, in terms of new technologies, in terms of what you hope to be able to accomplish in the years to come. So I can start. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I really think um, that's what what is next for us is to move a little faster. Mm -hmm. So um, in our cloud journey, as I mentioned, we started 10 years ago and then um, we've built on what we've learned. So um, as an example, we put our 
um, commercial data warehouse into uh, Amazon Redshift. Um, and then that laid the foundation uh, for us to do, for example, rapid data uh, labs. Um, we started by building some data lakes in um, in HR and uh, R&D. Um, and then by the time we got to doing that for uh, manufacturing, we did it serverless. Um, and so we've had a nice progression based on learning and then going the next step. But I think uh, we're to the point where the technology is evolving so quickly, we can move a lot faster and get the benefits faster. So for me, that's, that's what I view as what's next. Shalu, anything? Yeah, I would just add that I think analytics at the core, I think there's mm -hmm. such a strong foundation set here that now it's about how we're going to extrapolate from there and, and really look at you know both machine learning and what that could do for us. And, <laughs> and we will take a lot from yes. what we learned here today uh, about actually evolving that journey. And I think the best part is the foundation is set strong and now it's about accelerating into those mm -hmm. specific business areas as well. So I would say analytics and really extending our machine learning capabilities. Mm -hmm. So move faster, analytics, machine learning. Mm -hmm. Yes. Great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what we're going to be talking about in next year's yes. uh, summit. Uh, well, Kathy and Shalu, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. This was a lot of fun. Yes, it was. It was. Thank, thank you. you. I'm Rebecca Knight. We will have more of theCUBE's live coverage of the AWS Executive Summit coming up in just a little bit.